Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be discussing sentiment indicators. Now, sentiment indicators are simply a way of measuring or quantifying how market participants feel about the market. So it generally pays to follow the trend. So if market participants are bullish and prices are generally rising, usually you wanna take long positions and follow the trend and it doesn't pay to be a contrarian. And on the other hand, when prices are generally declining, declining and markets are fearful, it usually pays to uh, take short positions or stay in cash at that point. However, often the sentiment can reach very extreme readings, and that's why we'll be using our sentiment indicators. So uh, while market participants can be bullish in general, this, this bullishness can reach extreme levels where there's extreme bullishness that you would even call greed or euphoria in the case of a market bubble, let's say the dot-com bubble. And on the other hand, markets can be a bearish, participants can be bearish, but also this bearishness can reach extreme levels where people completely give up or capitulate, which happens uh, in March of this year, which we talked about six months ago. And that's one of the reasons I'm revisiting this topic today. I feel like we've seen uh, both of these extremes, both extreme fear and euphoria, and uh, extreme panic in the same year, actually multiple times. And so I'm revisiting uh, this topic today. So in this video, we're going to discuss several indicators that are commonly used to measure market sentiment, including the fear and greed index, the VIX, the put call ratio, and the AAII sentiment survey. And as usual on this channel, not only are we going to discuss these indicators, we're going to write some Python code to work with the data behind these indicators. So we're going to find some historical data snapshots and pull data from a variety of sources together. Uh, we're going to clean up this data. And by clean up this data, I mean that uh, this data, some of it is in tweets. It's in uh, the, the web archive. There's snapshots of this data. Some of it's in CSV files. Some of it's in Yahoo. Uh, some of it, it you need to uh, write a screen scraper to get. So uh, we want to discuss how to get um, different sources of data so that you can apply it to other other data sets you may find. So we're going to discuss how to clean up that data, get the date in a consistent format, um, and get everything all together so that it can be uh, stored in a consistent way in a relational database. It can be uh, used in a back test. And, um, and also, I want to actually deploy a server where this data is snapshotted on a regular basis and it will be out there for other people to use. So I'm going to show you uh, how to do that in some of the follow-up videos after this. So uh, let's go ahead and get started and start talking about uh, these indicators and the Python code. One last thing, I wanted to personally thank a few viewers out there who have contributed generously to the channel. So I set up this buymeacoffee.com if you want to buy me a coffee or a drink, a beer, whiskey, whatever it is, I'll drink it. And uh, this is just a page, it's similar to a Patreon, but you just make a one-off contribution. A few people have asked me in the past if I had a way to contribute something uh, to, to just show appreciation for the videos. So that's why I've set this up here. And quickly, I wanted to thank a few people uh, someone who prefers to remain anonymous, apparently. So uh, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, bought me three whiskeys, so got this Knob Creek here. So thank you very much. Uh, it's much appreciated. And Michael Streck here bought me five, which is which is awesome. Uh, that'll last a long time. And uh, he even personally emailed me saying he liked the Twitter hashtag video, which I appreciated. I wasn't sure if people liked that video that much. There was only like three or four hundred views on that. And this this was more of a fun gambling app where we uh, made a Chrome extension that integrated with Twitter. And then if some trader mentions a stock, you can see a chart and then buy even out of the money call options right there from within the browser. So just a fun app. It had this little YOLO button where you could buy uh, those call options, which if you missed it, one of them was DraftKings that we demonstrated here. And you'll see there was these DraftKings uh, 44 calls, 42.50 calls, right? There were only like a dollar. And then look at DraftKings for the week. Uh, this is where you could have entered Monday morning, five large green candles there. And you could have bought a DraftKings at $40, brought those 44 calls. It's now trading at $55 a share. And if you look at those $1.07 calls, that were on there that last was eleven dollars and thirty five cents hundred dollar investment thousand dollars eleven hundred dollars ten bagger right there a thousand percent gain so you know that that video was pretty good 
And then finally, I want to thank uh, James Hadley, who bought me a drink here. So thank you for that. It was actually his idea to set up this page, and he was the first contributor. And so I appreciate that as well. So thanks a lot for contributing. And obviously, the best way to contribute is to like and subscribe to these videos and keep watching. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So first, let's look back at extreme measures in sentiment that we've experienced so far in the past year. So you'll see on my Twitter here, on January 2nd, 2020, I described how I was feeling to start the year. And you can see I said 2019 was one of the best years of investing ever. 2020 will be much harder. Extreme overbought levels to start the year opposite of last year. Expecting more volatility and large sellers this year. Looking, looks like Iran. I said Iran would be the trigger. Completely wrong. That lasted like a day. It ended up being COVID being the, the trigger to go the other direction. And then I said watching gold and oil at that particular time uh, looks like because of Iran and maybe expecting inflation. So, um, and then I posted a screenshot of the fear and greed index at that time. It looks like when we closed out the year, that was at 97. So extremely greedy. And one of the components of the fear and greed index is the uh, put call ratio. And you can see this shows a graph of the uh, CBOE five day average put call ratio. And you can see at, at times when it's above one or closer to one, that's usually an indicator of extreme fear. So the put to call ratio is just the number of puts bought over the number of calls. So if more puts are being bought than calls, then that's would be over one on the ratio. And so you can see there's a spike here and that corresponds to May of 2019 so a lot of put buying and that was around the time where the trade war was the big headline of the day and people got fearful and then also you can see towards the end of the year at, in december of 2019 you see it's way down here and so you see the ratio is really low so oftentimes when the put call ratio is below about i would say 0.6 that's the number where there's extreme bullishness and everyone's uh, loaded up on call. So if there are 500 puts bought and uh, 1,000, 1,200 calls bought, you can see that the put call ratio is very low, below 0.6. And you can see at the end of December, everyone's just loading up on calls because there was a pretty a pretty nice little melt up uh, from October through December of 2019. And then I also mentioned um, at the end of the previous year, so at the end of 2018, you remember uh, December 24th, Christmas Eve uh, 2018, there was a huge sell-off where the S&P 500 went to, I believe, 2354 was the number. Um, and then there was a lot of fear at that particular moment. But that fear was a great moment to buy, great time to buy Apple stock and other other uh, favorites tech stocks there. And then uh, 2019, you experienced just an easy, easy market uh, and captured that entire move. The next thing I want to do is rewind to about six months ago and talk about a period of fear in the market. And I actually recorded a video at the very beginning of March where I was talking about the VIX and recording it. Uh, getting a snapshot of the VIX and looking at VIX spikes and whether it would be a good idea to uh, start allocating some capital during uh, those time periods when there's like a spike in fear. And so in Mar on March 1st, 2020, I talked about the spike and I also mentioned this article, old Motley Fool article, Morgan Housel, great writer, and he talked about what I plan to do uh, when the market crashes. And he talked about the how the market basically um, has a correction every year. So every year there's about a 10% correction. Uh, every 24 months, you're going to expect a 15% correction. Um, bear market every four years, 20%. And it's about a once in a decade event, event when uh, the indexes uh, go down by 30% uh, that year. And so I was kind of thinking about how uh, March of 2020 seemed to be a once in a decade type of event, if not uh, once in a generation type event that was setting up to occur. And so what I did, this is one of the cases where I didn't follow the trend and I said, there's an extreme amount of fear, I'm gonna start buying, but I'm actually gonna average in. So he recommended allocating a certain percentage of your capital if you have some cash on the sidelines um, and allocating uh, a certain quantity. So at a 20% level, uh, you're probably about two thirds invested and then a 30%, 40%, you're probably 75, 80% uh, invested. And so, yeah, I treated this like a once in a decade kind of event. And then I also said later, and I'm gonna watch this uh, part real quick, I'm gonna replay it. 
And I'm going to replay this part of the video because I mentioned that uh, we want to revisit this uh, six months from now. So this is a fearful period and we're checking in six months from now to see, you know, did our sentiment change? And so uh, this this is the back trader uh, back test I was showing. I was showing spikes in the VIX, that green corresponding to uh, if you were to bought at that point. Uh, there's a green arrow on this spike and there's a green arrow on uh, this spike and this green arrow is December 24th, 2018. That corresponds to this spike and you see the spike at the very end here, right here on March 1st, uh, where the VIX is elevated here and it looks like there's a green arrow that's hard to see here, but it basically this little back test just registered another buy signal uh, when the S&P dropped quickly below uh, 3,000. So I believe it's uh, 295 around this this point and I'm discussing what might happen here and how I think I'm going to behave in this situation and so I'm gonna play what I was saying here and then talk about it and yeah we're gonna go back and revisit uh, this moment later in time let's give it like six months and uh, we can see what happened what, what ended up being a good idea was this this buy here a good idea and I'll be curious to see what happens this time because they say, as they say, you know, historical results here, they don't guarantee anything about the future. So let's go back and revisit uh, this buy here when the S&P 500 dropped uh, below 2,900 here. Um, and also one other thing to keep in mind, um, it's also good to keep some on the sidelines here. I wouldn't go all in, but I would buy some stocks. Um, you notice in August 2015, there was a rally. So I'm kind of expecting there to be a pretty good bounce. But you'll notice in February of 2016, there was a pretty big decline as well. So this wasn't the actual absolute low. And also this decline wasn't the absolute low. There, it went up, there was a new all-time high, and it went down all the way again before having more significant rally. So, you know, my, my gut tells me that this isn't going to be the end. We're going to have a pretty big bounce. And usually there's some damage caused psychologically with people. And so a lot of people will sell and try to get their money back. And then there'll be some more fear around the election. And then usually th this will go back down and at least get to that level, if not a little bit lower to the 2700. Maybe it even goes down lower, closer to this previous low that was the, at the end of 2018. And so it, it'd be good to make sure you're, you're allocating new capital on the way down and also keeping some money on the sidelines so you don't panic if you're all the way in here. So let's revisit this and uh, see what happens in six months and check it out. Fast forward to six months later. So I recorded that on March 1st of 2020. Six months later is September 1st, 2020. And if you look here, September 1st here, and then September 2nd, we're at all time highs in the S&P 500. We went from extreme fear to extreme greed, all time highs. S&P went to 3580 or so. Um, exa almost exactly six months later, we were above S and P thirty five hundred, which is an, an incredible gain. So uh, buying into that panic, if you could stomach it, was a great idea, and indeed I did do that. And I also wanted to mention how I sold in the past week. So I did not sell this top. I got caught up in the greed myself. I had just bought that. Uh, I had made the TTM squeeze video, so I took some positions here on August 24th and got this nice little move here. So you'll see how right after the TTM squeeze video, uh, the stocks we mentioned like Google and Visa had quick runs as well, which was great. But yeah, I was I was caught up in the greed myself um, and there was immediately a sell-off. So hard sell-off happened right there. And then there was a bounce back uh, right here. Um, and I, I was kind of worried that we weren't gonna stay above the February high. And so I exited on September 14th. I sold into that gap up on Monday. And I'll, and I'll show you actual, actually what I did. Um, and so I, I, I finally had a little bit concerned here. I felt like this uptrend was broken and that we were having some trouble going above uh, the, uh, holding above the highs from February. So I exercised uh, caution here. So I did a six, roughly a six month hold and exited a lot of stocks in this past week. And that's why I really wanted to uh, revisit uh, revisit this video and see if we're going to, going to go back to a period of fear before the elections and have another sell-off, which may be another buying opportunity. And we'll check on that in the future as well. And just to show you, I did actually average into the fear here without revealing too much about myself and my personal finances. Uh, these are some of my, my buy dates and the prices I got and the great prices you could have got on the S&P 500 and the Dow if you bought during this period. So you can see like March 11th here, uh, I got prices of S&P 
uh, or the spy at 277, 279, 257, 253, uh, and you basically you could buy all day for this month and get the S and P 500. I believe I got an average price of around 250, which which in my opinion a great buy if the uh, S and P 500 is down 25 to 35 percent. I feel like you have to take advantage of that. And also the Dow Jones, I even bought some uh, DIA, the ETF for Dow, and I got actually Dow at 19,600 basically, uh, and about an average price of 20,000 on the Dow. And I even got uh, some SPY on the uh, the actual date, uh, March 23rd. So yeah, I was actually get, able to get some SPY at 221, which is, which is incredible. And I even bought some, uh, the VNQ, Vanguard Real Estate, uh, crashed to 62. Um, and then also, um, there was a video I, I posted on March 18th or so, or 17th, where I bought a Zillow and Redfin stock. I've deleted it now because I didn't want to ma make this a, a stock picking channel, but I'm literally like having a beer and buying stocks on the cheap. So I bought a Zillow, I believe I got for like 19 or $20 a share. Redfin, I got for like $10. Um, a couple of Exxon and Twitter didn't really pay off really, but uh, there were some incredible deals to be had then. I should have went, in hindsight, I should have went heavier on tech and bought QQQ instead of Dow and SPY, but what are you gonna do? And then I completely exited my S&P 500 and Dow Jones uh, index uh, indexes on September 14th, and that's where I'm at now, and I'm looking to, I'm looking for a correction. We'll see if I'm off on this. I still have a little bit of money allocated, but I've, I've sold the majority, and so we'll see if I get another opportunity to make a large buy like this. So um, that's, that's what I did, that's what happened, that's a review of the last uh, six months, and uh, let's talk about where we're at now. So I'm gonna take a quick break here. I actually just got a notification from my fantasy football league here that Saquon Barkley was carted off the field. So I, I'm, I'm doing a fantasy football league and watch football sometimes it's Sunday. Um, and I've talked for a while and I'm going to go check on what's going on with the team and maybe watch some football for a bit while I export uh, this video, which might take like an hour. And so I'll come back and continue the discussion. But I thought uh, this had been a good 15 or 20 minutes. So I'll stop it here. I thought we had a pretty good discussion of the market and how far we've come this year. Um, we've went from one extreme of greed to extreme fear to extreme greed again. And and in the next video, we'll start writing the Python code to work with data sets for these particular indicators. So uh, thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next video.